Why does Rory die so much? <laughs> you know, something I, that is quite um, uh, fascinating about these characters and their relationship to one another is that they are all willing to sacrifice themselves for to save each other. And Rory, I think, is more willing to sacrifice himself for Amy than anybody else. Uh, and it just shows his absolute love for her. Um, and the wonderful thing is that he then, in turn, keeps being saved by the doctor. Um, and, uh, but there will, there will come a time when, um, who knows? When you're preparing to do a scene as River, how do you get into River mode? How do I get into River mode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, how do I get into River mode? Um, well, the day starts, um, a typical day, uh, I'll be usually picked up around about five in the morning, 5.30, something like that. Um, I get, will be driven to the studio. Um, the day begins with going straight into hair and makeup. Um, and usually I'll be in there for, I guess, about an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and the others will come in and we'll chat about the scene that we're about to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, and somehow when you're in, in already in that environment, because everybody's focus is then on slowly becoming the characters that we're going to play, uh, by the time I get out of the makeup trailer, I then go back to my trailer and put on my costume. I'm sort of, I'm pretty ready. Um, and, and I think also just, I mean, Matt, Matt and Karen and Arthur, they, for the, for the time that we film Doctor Who, they live and breathe Doctor Who. I mean, they, they have so little time off. Um, they their days are really intense. And in England, we work 11-day fortnights, which means that only every two weeks do we have a weekend off. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there's no opportunity, really, for a social life or anything when we're filming. And Matt is in every single scene, so his, he, he really lives and breathes that character. Uh, so it's actually quite easy to just, when, you, when I arrive, when I fly in and, and do my episodes, it's quite easy just to step into that world because they're already living it. Um, and, and I'm a little bit like River, who sort of just flies in and helps them out for a bit and then flies off again. <laughs> <laughs> were you, like, what was your reaction when you found out you were actually Melody Pond? Like, were you surprised? Or? Uh, I was surprised, yes, yes. I, I was not expecting that at all. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> um, and uh, funnily enough, um, when I uh, read, read the episode um, and saw the, um, the sort of the, um, the time frame, and it was the flashbacks of Melody's childhood and them all going to school together and everything, um, it sort of didn't really occur to me that that was me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, because, uh, you know, Stephen hadn't, hadn't warned me. Um, he told me that I, was their, that I was their child, but he didn't tell me that I was Melody Pond. Um, so when I saw this, this, young, this young girl in the flashbacks, um, at school being naughty and all of that. Mm -hmm. I just thought she was like a, happened to be a friend who they were growing up with and I was thinking, oh, this is, is this character, what's she gonna be doing in this episode and are we gonna be saving her or what's happening? Um, and I really hadn't put two and two together. Uh, but I thought it was interesting, I really did, yes. So, you know the, the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff, like are you planning to go there or have you been there? I haven't, because the Doctor Who experience was in um, Earl's Court in London. Um, it's been there for years. And um, I, all of the others have been to see it. And um, I haven't had the opportunity, uh, because you kind of have to prearrange going, mm -hmm. either very early in the morning or just before it's about to close, so that 
so that we can actually go around without being um, mobbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and so I, I never managed to sort of organize it. But the, the really strange thing is that the Doctor Who experience is now, it's been moved to Cardiff, and it's, um, I think it's probably just opened. It's right next to the studios where we film Doctor Who. Um, which, to be perfectly honest, as far as I'm concerned, I think is actually kind of, somebody hasn't been thinking very carefully <laughs> about that because, um, I don't know how we're going to get to work. <laughs> um, I, I just think as soon as the fans know that we're actually filming there, it's going to be mayhem. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, but I, I, I do want to go. Yeah. If the monsters from Doctor Who were real in real life, which one would you fear the most? Would I fear the most? Fear. Yeah. Um, the the monster that I found the most frightening, and in fact they've only they've only been seen once, and I think. I don't know whether they'll ever bring them um, onto the screens again, because I think they were actually too scary, were the, um, those, zombie, those zombie ones that had the water all coming out of their mouths. Oh, like the ones with the, like, with the, the episode with the, they drink the water or something? Yes, on yeah, Mars. Yeah, I saw that. I, yes. Oh, that's really scary. They terrified me, yeah. absolutely terrified me. Um, yeah. And... Uh, in fact, I think originally, because this, this was when Russell was still um, uh, show running um, and it was his episode, um, they originally had contact lenses in that were just, their eyes were just white. Um, and they'd started filming and in fact they'd seen the rushes and um, it, it was so scary that they, they made an executive decision to change that so that their eyes I think were still their eyes but they just sort of looked glassy or you know vague but um, be because it was just too frightening um, and given that it is a family show you know there is a there is certainly um, a, a level that you can't kind of go beyond really but um, aside from those um, I find the Weeping Angels and the Silence the most frightening because they, they as, as well as just being physically rather frightening, um, I just think psychologically they're frightening because with the Weeping Angels, I mean, we've all grown up with statues in our midst. Uh, we all relate to statues and gargoyles and... and um, and I certainly, as a child even, would play a game where I'd think the statues, you know, what if they really came alive or what if they had a, a spirit within them or did they move or not? And, and so for, St for Stephen, in a sense, to, to take that idea, which maybe is a common idea amongst children, um, and actually run with it. And, um, and similarly with the silence, it's brilliant because... For a start, they look like um, Edward Munch's *The Scream*. That's that's where where the the f image I think first was born. It was that that face. Um, but then again, to play with the 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 sort of the notion that they're amongst us, just we can't remember yeah. we've seen them, um, is fantastic because they could all be here now, yeah. and we've all we just don't we've forgotten. Yeah. Uh, and so he. He plays that both of those those monsters are, are, are you're playing with your psyche as well as just the the sort of the literal scariness factor. So that's why I think they're the best. Hello. Hello. Um, two questions actually. One, um, out of all the episodes that you yourself have personally been in, um, which one um, have you had the most fun shooting? I uh, I can't actually really say because. Um, every single episode I've done um, has had its sort of ups and downs. Uh, you know, there have been some episodes which, um, where we've been in really interesting locations, but the weather has been appalling and we've been freezing. And I mean, we filmed in Stonehenge, which is never allowed, um, and we did a night shoot there. And we were, we were literally allowed to stand within that stone circle all night long and we got the chance to see the sunrise and I mean that was extraordinary and and at the time that we were filming um, 
there were um, these um, volunteers who are called dos docents. Um, they, they're there to protect the stones and everything, and they had to be there all night with us. And so I, um, I was talking to one of the docents who then came and, and took me on a little tour of, the sto of these ancient stones and um, showed me, because they were saying that the reason why the stones are now um, fenced off is because of the um, just damage of human traffic. Um, but he went and showed me one, one of the stones that had graffiti on it, but graffiti from like 100 AD. I mean, going way, 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 way back. And literally, it was a, it was a Greek sword that had been etched into one of the stones. So it was a, this is pre-Roman times. This, it was a Greek, probably a Greek merchant or something who had come over to Britain. And, and for whatever reason that those stones were important then, he had made his mark on the stone. I would never have seen that if we hadn't been filming Doctor Who um, <laughs> at Stonehenge. So there are things like that that are really amazing. But as to a, a favorite, favorite moment, I, I have many. Um, and what do you think would happen if the silence and the weeping angels looked at each other? If they looked at each other, well, the angels would forget they'd seen the silence. <laughs> the minute that they moved. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the TARDIS journal, does it actually have anything written in it, or is it just a blank book that you use Oh, no, no, no. The journal is absolutely full. Um, it's fantastic. I think I said that um, in the silence in the library, the, um, the, the first, the, 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 those episodes, so the first time I, I played that role and was performing, um, and I, I was given the book. And I hadn't seen it before, and I was literally just given it for that scene. Um, and I opened it up, and the art department have absolutely just filled the book with all of these drawings and references and um, quotes and little paragraphs of, of sort of reminders of adventures and things. I mean, it's just, it's a work of art. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and I was asked yesterday at the Q&A if there was one, th one thing that I would like to have or to take with me if, um, you know, w when my time on the show comes to an end. And it, it would be that book uh, because it's, it's just beautiful. How much harder is it to play a, like where the story's plot line is much more jumbled and confusing than a a strict uh, uh, it's, story yeah um, it's it is it's not easy at all um, and I, I I think there's no point in even trying to decipher what is what's going on or try to understand um, the best way for us to get through it as actors is just to trust that Stephen and the other writers know what they're doing. <laughs> If they asked you to do like a spin-off like Torchwood or the Sarah Jane Adventures, would you do it? Well, I, um, I, I again, I had, was asked this question the other day. Um, John Barrowman, who's Captain Jack on Torchwood, um, he and I share the same birthday. Hmm. And um, we bumped into each other at a party uh, a couple of months ago. And we just got so excited and we were saying, oh my God, this is the fact that we have the same birthday, that means something. And, and um, <laughs> that means that we should be working together. And, <laughs> and so I said that I'd talk to Stephen and he said he'd talk to Russ. And we were like, yeah, we could have a show together um, and get up to some mischief. Um, <laughs> so, but I think Torchwood's been canceled, I think, or, or at least it's not, it, they, they are not resuming it yet or in the near future. So, um, which means that John has a lot of time on his hands. Um, mm. <laughs> but it would be fun, yes. It would be really fun. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're welcome.